Hey everyone, this is Matt from the Bronco Nation. We're out here today in Moab and we've got a really cool Bronco behind us today that we're gonna be walking through. And I'm here with Ryan. So Ryan, can you introduce yourself and tell you kind of, tell us kind of what you do? Sure, so my name's Ryan Canelli. I work in the 4WP engineering department and I'm the drivetrain manager. What we do is uh, upfit everything. I mean, basically truck, Jeep, and now Bronco. Can you tell us a bit about what this vehicle is, um, what you guys do, and kind of what this means for your relationship with Ford and with Bronco? This is actually a really neat project because Ford had come to us and said, hey, we want partnerships with the aftermarket industry. And they had done a lot for the in aftermarket industry before they even started. Um, adding the accessory points so that you could add lights in multiple locations and more adaptive, um, you know, accessory, you know, accessorizing, right? Is what they were working on. And uh, so we came back with a plan and said, all right, we wanna, we wanna lift it, we wanna add armor to it, and we wanna make it fully functional and usable so that the customers can go from the dealer to the four-wheel parts and load that thing up and hit the trail. All right, cool. Well, now let's go ahead and dive into some of the details about this vehicle. All right, so we'll start with the exterior of the vehicle. So Ryan, go ahead and tell us about this front bumper. There's a lot going on here. It seems to be pretty modular. There is a lot going on. So one of my favorite things is they've cut this clearance area so that you could get an obstacle right up to the tire and, and not rub the body on the ground. I think that's pretty much key to most off-roading vehicles, right? The next thing is you'll notice they got six inch single rows here. So you've got options and then there's a four inch or, a, or two inch pod in the front for uh, multiple size pods for multiple different brands. Then you'll notice a winch. The winch is actually a bolt-on option. So we can do a winch plate or not a winch plate. The winch plate is rated for 12K and the pull points are rated for 20,000. So that's pretty neat. Um, you also notice this is all black powder coated, super clean. It's powder coated to uh, 500 salt spray hours. And you're gonna notice the last little details on there is there's a big opening in the front. That's for the uh, radar cruise. We talked a little bit about the, the front bumper. Uh, this little guy right here is actually really neat. So the fender flares, Ford did a great job removing them with no tools, but that leaves these unsightly holes in the side. So we made it so that you get that early Bronco look, you know, by cleaning up the side of the truck. If you move down to the sliders, we've got um, two inch 120 wall tubing, same powder coat with 500 hour salt spray. Um, it's onto the factory pinch weld, no hole drilling, but if you, lay that thing over on its side, it's gonna support the weight of the vehicle as you're pushing your way through the trail. If you move up a little higher, you'll notice we've used their accessory points and we've made a place for uh, A-pillar pods. And then you move up a little higher, we've got a full roof rack assembly. And a lot of this stuff is prototypes, um, but we need to know what you think about it as we go down the path to making a real usable static and dynamic loaded rooftop tent. So I think one of the biggest things that we notice when we look at this vehicle is that bright red rooftop tent. Oh, right, right, right. Um, and we've seen some rooftop tents on some of the other Broncos, but you know, obviously this one's a little bit different. Um, when we look closer, we see that the roof rack is a little bit different too. Um, can you tell us about that and, and what that means, what you guys have done with this? So this, this build, we really wanted to be over the top. So we color matched the rooftop tent. This is our um, hard shell. This is a new tent for Smitty Built, but we've painted it to match the vehicle. And then we've added the, the Bronco logoing along with that. Um, the, this, all of this is something that Ford had asked us to do is come up with a solution that you can make it so the soft top or the hard top works. Um, and I think we all think this is unsightly when you have the exoskeleton coming to the bottom. And so we've deleted that and tried to get into some place that was strong and work into the body. So we got a lot of testing to do and uh, I'm hoping this makes it. So is this tent something that a consumer would be able to get and put on their vehicle or is that something that you guys are still testing? Yes, but not in red. You're gonna find it in black and it's gonna have the crinkle finish on it from Smitty Belt. And this is our, our Gen 2 hard shell. As we work our way around to the back of the vehicle, you'll notice a lot of the same features. Um, there's nice symmetry between the front and the rear bumper. You're gonna see the high line so that as you run over rocks and they pass through, they don't hang up on the rear bumper. But the big deal right here is the parking sensors. So all of the tech that Ford supplied, we did a really good job of making sure that we marry that with our new products so that you didn't lose any of that technology. If we move forward, you'll notice that we took the spare tire and we raised it up and pushed it out and we made sure that the bumper accommodated that, but it also accommodated the OEM bumper all the way up to 37s. We got a couple little details on the inside. This is all top secret stuff. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be showing you this, but if you notice, there's Molly Powell on the inside and then we've got the table on the outside. So. From the table, we go back to the inside and you'll notice that we've got this rack and this rack system, uh, its future is that it's gonna pull out like a truck and you'll be able to get to your refrigerator and you, all your recovery gear. And you noticed like 
some of the details that we put in there was like we put the Bronco logo on our recovery bags and we've got the rooftop tent onyx and uh, air compressor and shovels and all that stuff. We really wanted to put this over the top for Ford. So I'm interested about this fridge. Uh, that's something a lot of people are probably curious about. Um, is it a fridge freezer combo? How big is it? Um, what do you expect to actually be storing in there? So these are about 54 quarts if I, re if I remember correctly. Um, they're a single zone, so meaning that they've only got one temperature zone rated, but they are got dual capacity. So in the upper part above the is the crisper kind of vegetable area and down below is, is for frozen stuff. So if you turn it down to 26 degrees or you can go all the way down to 16 if you want, um, you can freeze ice cream in there. Now, one of the big things that we notice when we look at this Bronco are the massive 37 inch tires. Uh, we know that standard, we see 35 inch tires with the Sasquatch package. Uh, but this is one of the first that we've seen with 37s. So can you tell us about these tires? Uh, tell us about these wheels. So the, um, I, I think we all think that the evolution of when a vehicle comes with 35s, you have to be able to upfit the 37s, right? And so we talked to BFG and BFG had this awesome load range D in a 3717. Um, we put it on a Method 310, which is a great classic six spoke wheel, looks like a beadlock. It's got a great 35 millimeter offset and that pushes the wheels in and makes sure that they clears the suspension. And that's gonna be nice. So if you push the wheels all the way out, that's a cool look, but it's gonna rub the fenders. And you know, we don't wanna be trimming all that new body work on your brand new vehicle. All right, so wrapping up the exterior, I really wanna talk about this stripe. Um, that's something we haven't seen on a Bronco yet. And it kind of gives it a, a retro vintage vibe. Um, that's really where I wanna live is in that retro world. And uh, our creative team knocked it out of the park. Working with Bronco, you know, working with Ford directly, you know, it's a nice carryover that we've got our accessory name right with Bronco and it's synonymous that we are at the front line of building this vehicle. Is this something that the customers can expect to see from you guys? That's a great question and I will raise that with the marketing team and see if they want to sell it as a package. Well, we'll let you guys let us know in the comments if you want to see a stripe like this. Um, I think I would, so we'll, uh, we'll stay tuned and see what you guys have to say. All right, so we want to talk about now some of the, uh, the functional components of this Bronco. Obviously, it's a lot higher off the ground than a stock Bronco would be. So tell us about that. Tell us what you guys have done to it uh, kind of underneath and from the suspension standpoint. So, so I, I think the very first question everybody asks is how big a tire can I put on and how much lift do I need, right? Mm -hmm. And so since we did the 37s, we immediately said, okay, we got to get to three, three and a half inches of lift. So we maximized the coilover so that it would have 20% more wheel travel and give you that lift. Now, if you get into those bigger lifts, you're gonna need an upper control arm, and the upper control arm is a high angle control arm, and that's gonna reset your camber and caster to make sure you're within those factory settings. So again, working with Ford to not lose any of the stuff that they had developed, um, but getting those aftermarket components like you really want. So when we look at the bumper too, I noticed that there's some pretty beefy skid plates underneath. So tell us what you guys have done with that. Can we find them all the way underneath the vehicle? Yeah. Um, Tell us about it. Yeah, so basically what happened is we got an in-depth phone call with Ford and they shared CAD data with it and said, okay, we just came back from King of the Hammers and we noticed the control arm tabs were all bent up. We need you to protect all this stuff. And so they basically gave us bullet points and said, uh, you need to protect this, 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 and this. And so we started from the front and we made sure our front skid plate protected the front control arm pads. And then the second skid plate that covers the oil pan also protects the rear set of tabs for the control arms. And then we go farther back and we cover up the transfer case uh, keep moving back and we go to the back. We actually cover where the OEM reservoirs are going to be. We've made a, a shield around there. And then last but not least, they wanted a, a rear diff deflector. So we built a big cradle that covered all that. And so uh, most of these are prime time, ready to go. A couple of them in the back still have a little tweaks because we want to do a lot more testing, but uh, they'll be on the shelf of four parts before the vehicle is released to the dealer. All right, moving our way on to the inside now, we're gonna cover some of the, the features and then also some of the things that four wheel parts have done to the interior. Um, I'm gonna give a high level walk around of the interior. Um, we've, we've done a walk around and it's on the way for a black diamond interior, or if it's already out now, then go ahead and check that out. But from a high level perspective, we do have the marine grade vinyl seats, the grabber blue accents, the eight inch screen, and then working our way up here is where we see the actual aftermarket parts uh, from four wheel parts. And so we have an aluminum uh, bring your own device rail, that BYOD rail um, that we first saw in the original camping concept. And um, this thing is pretty cool. I think it'll be pretty useful when we're actually on the road. Um, you can mount things like your cell phone, a GoPro, um, a CB radio, 
Um, but I know that's something that they were excited to offer um, and we're pretty excited to see uh, on the Bronco interior. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for walking us around this vehicle. Um, I think it's one of the coolest Bronco builds that we've seen yet. Um, definitely my favorite, great color, a lot of cool touches that you guys have added to it. So tell us, you know, where can we find these parts? When can we expect to see them? Um, because I know a lot of people that get their Broncos are probably very excited to get some of these points. Oh, I have a bunch of friends already that have them pre-ordered and they're, they're super excited about what May and, they, and then they move it to June and then July. You're like, I don't know when it's coming out, but I know for sure our parts are going to be out before their vehicles get here. So um, if you want to go to foralparts.com forward slash Bronco HQ, uh, you can see more products and more displays about all these new stuff, all the new concepts that are coming out. Um, and then you can go to Four Parts, you can go to Four Parts online. That's where you're gonna find all this stuff. So awesome. thanks for spending any time with us. Yeah. All right, Bronco Nation, thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed our video. Check out our description for links on where to find a lot of these products and subscribe to stay tuned on uh, what's going on in the Bronco community and to see more Bronco content.